everybody. To 1884. We have the lovely cast from yesterday still missing Manfred, although as you can see, he has been pinged more than once. More than more than once. So he says it's probably he's probably dead by now. But either way, I want you to say hi to this gentleman. There is uh, Rick, for, uh, also known as, uh, if I remember correctly, your name is Cedric Rafaela. Correct. We have a Philip Q. Trebich as Gid. No, we have Gid as Philip Q. Trebich. And, of course, we have uh, Alfonso Sandals as uh, Grim as Alfonso Sandals. Sadly, we're missing... Simon Black, but uh, hopefully he comes in at some point. This is the second time this is something, so hopefully we get to see him. Uh, we're going to be playing on the 1884 rule set, which you can find down in the description below. Also in the Discord server, which you can also find down there. And uh, this is episode one, which is takes place right after character creation. Uh, all of our gents are nicely in London, so let us begin. So... We have... Let's start one by one. Let's start with Cedric. So, where are you right now? Where would you be? Probably at work. You are part of the Ministry of... Affection. Affection. Ministry of Affection, yes. So, what are, what are you doing at work? Oh, uh, well, what any good affection minister, affection minister is doing at a given moment. <coughs> Probably torturing someone. Yeah, you're filing in paperwork. You're, uh, you're still outer party, I believe. Yes, I am. Just an inner party wife. Yeah. So you're at the Ministry of Affection just uh, doing regular paperwork. Yes. Finding dissidents, setting up mind bobbies. Uh, you! Philip, where is you? I am... Actually, at one of my quote-unquote friends' houses, my friends who has some favors that he owes to me. We are drinking some nice little whiskey, and I'm leaning over his shoulder like, Yes, write some more names onto the paper. No, more names on the, the paper. See, I, I know. I, I knew you would be really helpful to the state. Thank you very much. Your debt can be settled later. I will talk with the right people about it. Alright, wonderful. So you're at your friend's house. And you, Grim, where is Alfonso? Alfonso is probably doing mind bobby things like arresting rebellious bravos and such. Okay, so Grim is just doing the regular beating. Um, Gid is getting names at his friend's house, and Rick is just doing his old menial job. However, Rick, you hear on the sirens that there is about thirty minutes until the two minutes of a pour come on. So you. Start preparing your workbench, you start cleaning your stuff up, because there's only 30 minutes until you have to attend. Uh, you, Gid, actually are coerced by your friend that you should go to the Ministry of Affection to uh, participate in the two minutes, because, well, if you don't, that's pretty bad. And both of you are still on company hours. And you, Grim, you are actually coming back to the Ministry of Affection through, to bring in some dissidents, and you hear about the two minutes. Um, so, all of you, gather your things up, you leave. Rick goes up from his desk to go to the, to a higher floor. Philip takes his friend and starts going towards the ministry, and, uh, you, uh, Alf Alf Alfonso just finally settled everything, put, put everyone in the cells, and are yourself heading over to the two minutes. On the way there, however, all three of you notice something peculiar. You, Rick, notice that someone is uh, looking at you quite odd. But as soon as you, as soon as they notice you looking at back at them, they quickly snap their head away and quickly rush off. Uh, you, Gid, notice that uh, 
some people from some dark alleyways are looking at both you and your friend with curious eyes, adverting their gaze so as to not as so you don't see them looking at you. And you, Grim, are eyed up by several dissidents who you've been bringing in off and on. So most of them already know your name. Some of them make jokes with you. But one of them looks looks quite weird. Sadly, you don't have the time to spare to look at him closer because the two minutes are approaching fast. And eventually all of you reach this big room. Like, uh, the walls are white. The floor is white. Everything is white. And in the middle there's... Uh, a giant projector, like there's a projector behind on a pedestal, projecting on this big white wall. On both ends of it, on both ends of this wall are like two double doors. That's how people come in, and all throughout the room are just chairs all around, just in a in a sort of a, a semicircle. And next to those speakers, next to those, next to that uh, big wall on that wall, there's uh, several. Uh, sort of speaker-like things, you know, uh, phonographs, to sort of uh, brass cones that come out of the wall. Uh, and all of you take a seat. Uh, actually, out of curiosity, where do you take your seat? Far right, far left, middle. Middle. Definitely in the middle. Okay, in the middle. Right side. Okay. So if you take your seats, the, the room quickly fills up with a lot of people. Uh, actually, between Philip and uh, Cedric, there stands your friend, uh, Gid. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, you know, with a, a slight sweat on his brow, telling you about that. Telling you about how... The, the, just chatting up to hide his anxiety of being next to you. And, uh... Alfonso is on the, far, is on the right side, along... With other mind bobbies of his troop, just hanging out, cracking jokes. But then, everyone goes silent as there's a lou lou large horn noise over the speakers, and then a woman's voice says, The two minutes of a poll ought to begin. And then the room goes black, there's darkness, the projector begins hissing, and on the screen, you see the face of, hims of Good Uncle himself. Splattering some pro propaganda, uh, pro party propaganda, just through the speakers. You just hear his scratchy, but also at the same time sort of relaxing voice that you've known for years, or that you've grown to hate over the time period. You get for being from the Ministry of Abundance. You know his lies that he's telling right now. He's telling that oh, the harvest renewal of this season has been so great. We have, we have so many crops to spare for everyone, but you, Gid, in fact, know that, well, there are no crops for anyone. And in fact, it's, it's all barren. The field, some, most of the fields have been bombed or burnt. Uh, you, Rick, actually hear Good Uncle himself speaking about the low crime rates or how the war has been going on and how you're winning, but actually, uh, you know that the Germania, who Britannica is momentarily at war with Europa, uh, has begun actually advancing, and all the victories that he's that Good Uncle himself is saying have actually, are actually losses. But you know, but you know, you you know that they're losses because you you got the reports first. And you sent them to the Ministry of Truth for you know recalibration, and you actually know that the crime. Both you and Graham actually know that the crime rates have been rising severely upon, among the proles and basically there's in, in the outskirts of London there is no peace there's only uh, ethnic upheavals or like strong patriotic uh, demonstrations but no peace uh, also good uncle says that the the labor camps have reached an all-time low but in fact you Rick and you Grim know that they're at full capacity and you're running out of them but the speech goes on and on and on about just straight up useless information that you have no idea what it even means. You have been so disillusioned you kind of just tune out his voice at this point. But eventually, on comes the face of 
on comes the face of Emil Bronstein, the leader of the league. And he, and as soon as his face comes on, people jump out of their chairs yelling insults. Just full blown, just abhorrent insults that if I was to say them right now, I would get banned off of YouTube. But just some, some just real vile stuff, like even more than you said, Grim, when you were spewing insults in Finnish. Just some real obscene, just absolutely, just drowning out Emil out, just drowning out his voice. And he's just over there speaking, he's just yelling, he's, he's, you don't even understand what he's, what Emil is saying. He's speaking in, in just gibberish at this point, just yelling some, like, just string words, like, Revolution, Rebellion, Freedom, oh, how good were the old times, and all this nonsensical stuff that just, if you were to actually care to listen in, you would just not understand any of it, but each, each three of you do find yourselves engaging in much of the same behavior, which is standing up and yelling and uh, and just insulting this this man you see on this screen that you don't even know if he's real or not. He, he's, his hair is white. He has like this beard. His face is, is gaunt. His, uh, his cheekbones are showing. He's like, his eyes are bloodshot red. There's like, uh, redness around his nose, is it the cri the wrinkles around his face, is just messy white hair, messy white beard, and he's just, he's just yelling there on the screen in a, this tattered uh, dark blue suit that he's, that looks just beaten up and cut and everything. Uh, but either way, uh, you actually, you, uh, Rick and Grim, know, know who this actor is on, on screen. He's, he's not a meal. He's just some actor that they got that looks alike. And you two, in fact, have met him several times, but have sworn an oath of secrecy to the ministry. Uh, but as soon as they started, the two minutes have ended. And the screen goes black, it cuts out, and the same womanly voice comes on saying, Thank you, the two minutes of a poor are now over. And everyone gets up, some uh, swipe brow off, uh, some swipe sweat off their brow with a handkerchief, Others start talking to each other like this, just like they didn't just yell such abhorrent insults at just this man on the screen. It was like it never happened to them. It just, they just go back to their regular lives. And um, uh, you, Rick, actually recognize Philip. Your character actually recognizes Philip as a member, as a inner party member from the Ministry of Abundance. Uh, you two have passed hallways many, many a times when coming in and out of this two minutes of a pour. And you, Grim, actually recognize Rick. He's been, uh, for the last week or so. He's been giving you tasks on uh, tasks on who to raid. And actually, uh, Philip has been informing Rick on who to raid. Uh. Philip has been giving Rick this these uh, pro party members that, let's just say, he twisted the records up on on bit, and Rick has been sending you off to basically catch them and bring them to the Ministry of Affection. Uh, so what do you do? So I'm going to know that the other two, which basically means come find me, and to not raise any suspicion, I'm not going to go and talk to them. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave, say goodbye to my friends and go our separate ways, and I'm just going to wait outside on, you know, leaning against one of the walls. Alright. I shall go outside and find to find him leaning against one of those walls. So you just straight up the bolt act, bolt, like, bolt towards him. You don't sure. Like, you don't, like, exchange a word with uh, 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 Alfonso at all, you just Straight up, go towards him. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, Alfonso. I'm just ignoring you. So, well, what does Alfonso do? Follow, I guess. All right, he follows. Because something interesting is apparently happening because two people from ministries are talking to each other. All right, so you follow closely behind. You've actually been uh, been trained in this art of stalking, and uh, you're quite good at making sure that. Uh, Cedric doesn't notice your presence, but of course Cedric knows you're there. He's he's also quite well spoken in this art. 
So either way, uh, all of you uh, manage to get outside of the ministry. It's uh, a lot of people are leaving. The work hours are already ending, or like it's lunch time, and they want they want to go home. Uh, and so, Philip. So I guess you're just laying. Uh, you're just uh, sit, sitting across, like on a wall, just uh, smoking a cigarette. And uh, I guess uh, Rick comes up to you first. I'm just going to say to him, like, come with me. And we are going to a pub so I can hand over the stuff that I wanted. Okay. I presume Do I know him as my informant? Like, uh, I'm aware of him, or is it anonymous? Does he know? Good. Yes, he knows. Okay, yeah, you do know. Okay. So we got into one of the... Relatively private boots as one can get privacy in the state, but at least from the other patrons to an extent. Oh, wait, you're going, you're, the... Hold on, you're going to a pub. Yes. That means uh, pubs aren't really that common in London, so that means you're probably going to a parole pub, which uh, is about as much pri privacy as you can get. Okay, so we sit sit at the table. Imagine the scene like. The, the boot with the U-shape table in the middle, right? Rick is sitting on one end, I sit on the other. And as our beer comes, I slide out the paper and I'm actually slapping it onto the underside of the table, right? And I slide it across under the table. Uh, I'll, you know, slip my hand under and grab the paper. Okay, just so we don't forget about the phones, I'm gonna... I'm gonna say that uh, you, uh, Alfonso, follow them so silently and behind them as uh, they march into a pub, and you you enter that pub, cover your face a little bit. You know something suspicious is going on. You you want to get to the bottom of it. These two party members shouldn't really be talking to each other, especially in a parole pub. Yeah, and like you're you're like full on. I'm ready to pull out my truncheon and beat the shit out of these two. Just like. You managed to get like a nice sight of uh, them two getting their beers in their uh, in their booth, but uh, actually, roll me a perception, Grim. Okay, so you actually notice you notice a suspicious movement movement from Philip towards uh, towards uh, Cedric. We're going back to you two. Uh, so Cedric picks up the note. The note contains fourteen names. Uh, and by context, you should already know because this probably wasn't the first drop off. These are all relatively clean members of the party, but who can be found dirt on. That's not the thing. We are not actually hunting, or I, at least I am not actually handing over like known dissidents and known rebels and whatnot. I'm cherry picking the ones that actually have like crucial roles in the structural change and whatnot, so that I can uh, bring on sooner the demise and the collapse of the entire system. I know full on well dissidents, like oh see you don't know this, yeah. I know full on well rebels and whatnot, but I'm not giving up their name, I'm only giving up those that will actually hurt the state if they get caught. And do you, Rick, read the note? Like I'll right just pocket it. I know, I know what's in it, so yes, I don't yeah. really need to read it right. in public. Yeah. Right. Clean our glasses and I leave. Right. You notice. You notice that. Uh, you notice the same familiar face of that one Bobby you saw on the far right, on the right side, just also in the same pub. Well, I don't quite notice their face. They are wearing a gas mask. Well, you know, a mind Bobby doesn't always wear his gas mask. That would be quite revealing. So sometimes they they go undercover. They only wear their gas mask when they're on official business, like patrols and stuff. Well, I'm going to look that mind Bobby in the eye and nod my head, What's and I take my leave. What's your response, Grim? I ask his name. So you approach him. Yes. I'm Philip Crow Trebish. I put it into my mind and just let him go for now. This behavior continues on for like a week, a week or two. Same pub, same place. 
Always getting washed by by uh, Alfonso. No, 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 no. We switch our places. We switch. Oh, we switch. We switch. Yeah. Uh, well, either way, Alfonso somehow manages to trail you every single time, and you're you start getting worried, Philip. Maybe, maybe they're on to you. Maybe, maybe even. No, I'm in his ministry. Could I like pull strings to you know like make it harder? Like, oh hey, you have patrol around this very convenient time. Well, you could if you want to. You can roll governance for that. Fuck it, we ball. Minus 20, plus 8, you know, fuck it, we ball. It worked out! Fuck it, we ball. So, um, every time after the two minutes of hate, uh, Alfonso just gets these immediate orders. Like, hey, patrol! Right there! On the other side of town! It's always, Better always... Better getting up it, I guess. Yeah, always, always, always... At this, like, at these just random times, you just get these urgent orders to just go off and, and do this, like, menial task that even a fucking, that even just the most random of party members could have gotten done. Like, you yell at someone or something, I don't know. But, like, your suspicion meters, they're going off the charts with these two. You, you don't know what's up with them, they just, they tickle you the wrong way, you know? So... One night, Philip is walking home. He just got done gathering some more names for tomorrow's list. And actually, you, Alfonso, are happening to sit on your balcony. You're at home, you're off duty. You're just sitting around smoking a cigarette on your balcony. And you notice this, you notice the silhouette of Philip. You've, you've learned it, you've, you've memorized this, this, this man's way of just walking, of doing this stuff, because you're a mind of it. And you get the idea, you get this this thought, maybe I should follow him, see where he's going. Sure. So you act on that thought. Well, Can I roll a... Time to go outside. Uh, yes? Can I roll a perception to see if I am being followed? Uh, yes, in fact, you can. 88. 88. So you know you're being followed by someone. You don't know who exactly, but you know it's someone. So you know you're just you're walking, you're you're like uh, shadowing Philip at this moment. You're just you're walking, you're walking down the same alley he's walking. You're, like, you're taking deep And I'm, yeah, you're I'm like, taking. I'm changing my. Yeah, you just, you're just uh, you make sure you want to make sure he's not he he doesn't follow you home because well, yeah. if he did, it would be rather disastrous. So you continue walking, and you, you two, like, ring around the rosy for about half an hour. In cat and mouse games, huh? Yeah, cat and mouse for about half an hour. Um, until you get just get the idea to just go in this random random apartment building. You, you, you can't shake this mind Bobby off, so you just go into this random apartment building. And uh, you quickly realize it's actually uh, it's actually Cedric's apartment that, that you're approaching. Uh... Let's say apartment number twelve on the second floor, and you're like, sort of now, now sort of like fast walking towards this uh, towards this door at the end of the hallway, and you hear like you hear the footsteps of the my of the mind Bobby's boots just climbing slowly up the stairs, trying to conceal them as much as he can. And uh, what do you go from there, Cedric? Do you have any place I, where I could hide a wardrobe, a bed? Considering the amount of affairs I have, probably I do, actually. <laughs> Alright, uh, well, Cedric, because of your uh, fairy nature, you actually... You actually have this... Uh, you actually cut out a hole in your wall. Like, away from the... Uh, away from the Telecaster. That, you know, it's it's stalking your room. You just... There's this one blind spot, and you just cut a hole in the wall and made it into sort of a hidden door. Wait, hold up. Yeah. Actually, no scratch that now that I think about it. This mind bobbing knows that we are kinda meeting. You can't just tell him that you don't know who the fuck I am. He's going to go search the apartment, and if he can't find me now, he's just going to wait until I leave. It's best if we confront him face to face. I mean, there is two of us, one of him. <laughs> Not a bad idea! And as you're talking, you know, away from the telescreen, as you're talking, as you're, uh, 
conversing about your plan um, in, in shushed voices with some... Uh, you, Rick, are just uh, running a tap to make, make it seem like you're making some tea as you're talking with, uh, with Philip. And then you hear this aggressive knocking just on your door. You, Grim, I'll, are actively knocking. I'll head over to my door, you know. I'm a good citizen. Gotta, gotta answer for it of mine, baby. This is your cue, Grim. You're in Europe. I assume I ask the regular questions of what is going on here. Yeah, like I ask the questions. Home. You're having a tea. Would you like some? Yeah. What type of tea? Um, we have... Well, let's let's call it, uh, Triumph Tea. Sure, I wouldn't mind to have a cup. I guess I'm just inviting this mind Bobby in. You know, open the door, let him step on in. Uh, Grim, just for note, do you have your full uniform on? I assume so. Okay, you have your full uniform on. So, oh, uh, what, uh, what brings you by, officer? Investigations. Right. Indeed. You're all sitting around the dining room table, you know, cigarette smoke all around you. Your kids are hiding away in their, in their bedroom. Your, your wife is like, warily coming in, serving coffee, doing all that. You know, wife stuff. And the atmosphere in the room is just unbearably tense. It's just... You know from underneath that gas mask there's a psychopathic man who is ready to pull out some sort of weapon and just kill the both of you right there where you stand if you as, as even much as dare to step out of, li uh, out of line. You get, with your so high unorthodox, you kind of notice something in in, in uh, Alfonso's eyes. You, you notice that distinct scent of uh, dissident in the making. You, you see it, just this, like, the light just briefly shines through his lenses on his gas mask, and you see the eyes of a man who is kind of fed up with the party. Some, something you only saw in one other man, and it was, it was a man who vanished, who disappeared long ago. But you remember that look, the, the, this look of just, soon, soon something's gonna happen. And you even saw that look in your own eyes in the labor camp mirror, where you knew that this is it. This is the day I just choose my path. You, you see that in his eyes. So I'm going to pull a chair out. And I'm going to fold my arms over the chair. You know, like I flip it over, like in one of those detective movies, and just lean on it. Listen here, Mr. Mind Bobby. Now, you might investigate some suspicious stuff. I can assure you that you will find none over here. Mark my words though, if you want to continue on this path, despite you are doing your job, and you're doing your job as intended, if you move against me, or say even you step out of line and just kill me right in here, I guarantee you, less than five hours, you will be off to the mines. You'll never see the sunlight ever again, until the very last day when your back gives out. And then they just toss you into a mass grave. And they will write worker number 462 onto your back, and that's going to be the end of your story. Do you think this is right? Do you think this is how it should go? Because I can guarantee you this is how it's going to go. Do you think the party is going to protect oh, you? Alfonso just looks in silence. Yeah. The tension and the silence is definite. You, you could cut it with a knife, that's how thick it is. Now Cedric here knows. The party? It's only just serving itself. Yes, I know. What of it? 
Do you think it actually matters? You can say anything you want. You can say... You can do anything you want. If you know the right people. If you know the right string to pull. So Alfonso... Like, you notice, Philip, that he's pointing with his pinky finger towards the, tele towards the telecaster. And it's just... Uh, with his thumb actually pre like pretending like he's scratching some itch through his gas mask makes the silence sound and you quite quickly notice that he's uh he's warning you to stop speaking I'm just winking at him with my left eye and I smile because in truth I know that I can even say this bullshit or even act upon it. Because as long as I have the, the correct people in the high places, I know the right people, it's not going to matter in the end of the day. They're just going to scratch it from the records like they did like a hundred times before. Until it happens to one wrong person and then off to the mines yourself. But, actually, Cedric's wife comes in the room. And she hurriedly walks up to the, the telecaster and on the back of it flips a switch. The screen goes off and there's this this loud pop noise that comes from it. And she begins yelling at Rick. Who did you invite in our house? Who are these people? Why are they here? I'll just let her ran for a bit, take a sip of tea. Yeah, so she's just ripping into you. Technically, I didn't invite them. They invited themselves. And why are they in our house? Huh? Why? Uh, do you want your rations? She, she kind of looks at you and says, You are from the Ministry of Abundance. I know you. And I am from the Ministry of Tran Tranquility. We have very similar departments. And I'll have you know that I'm just as, bad as, as powerful as you because I too am an inner party member. So tell me, what the hell is an inner party member and a mind bobby doing in our house with our two children present at home? Well, one of them followed me here. And she kind of gives this look to, to Rick. She's like, God damn it, you piece of shit. You did it again, didn't you? You got yourself in some trouble with the inner party. Look, uh, Mr. Philip here is, uh, you know my job, he's an informant of, uh, dissidents. As for Mr. Mindbobby, he was following Mr. Philip here. Outside of his station, might I add that. I imagine I've become very familiar with his shifts at this point since I'm constantly yeah. fucking with him, so I know he's not supposed to be here on shift. Yeah, you, you actually know he's off shift. So well, what's the other two guys' response? She kind of just looks expectingly at uh, both Philip and uh, Alfonso. I just stay stuck, silent and keep listening to what's going on here. I'm just sipping tea with the most annoyed look in the world. Listen here. I'm just doing my job. And I know you're taking bribes. Everyone is taking bribes. The one who didn't take Alfonso bribes... Alfonso looks at disgusted at Philip. <laughs> Exactly, he doesn't know, but listen. The ones who didn't take the bribes are already in the mines. This is how stuff works. I know it, you know it, and now these don't know it, but what's the harm, really? This is how things work. And unfortunately, sometimes it's come to that that someone who doesn't know how things work, and I crane my head over to Grimm, but into the story thinking that they know how the system, how the party works, trying to do good, trying to shine through example or some bullshit. But the ones who burn the brightest are the ones who threaten most the hierarchy and the status quo, and they are the ones that extinguish the faster. I know. It happened with me too. Alfonso is still silent. Hmm. She kind of like gives out this large sigh and puts her fingers between her eyes and is like, oh, oh God, what trouble you get yourself in, Cedric. Sometimes I wonder why I married you. And she kind of 
walks away, and like as she's walking away, the, the the telecaster pops back on with the same pop, and she just opens the door and goes back to where the kids are presumably at. Kid. Technically, I only have one kid with her. Oh. They one exactly. of them. One of them is with that mind Bobby I'm looking. Oh, right. She doesn't need to know about that. Yeah, she doesn't need to know about that. Anyway. Yeah, as the record changed, you have now two children. <laughs> I thank R Rick's character for the tea and leave. I'm going to wait five minutes. Just in case he's walking on the other side of the door. I finished my tea if it's already boiled, not that it weighs. Thank you for your hospitality, Cedric. My compliments to your wife. Of course, and next time. How about we keep it to there a pub? Yes. I can assure you there won't be a next time. I am fairly certain that I can pull the correct string so that we won't ever see that one ever again. Whatever you say, Philip. Of course. And I quickly nod my head towards the Telecaster. Adieu. Alright. So the next day comes about. You know, just a regular day at work. You, Cedric, just go in, sit at your desk, start filling stuff out. Uh, you, Philip, take up your position in your office at the Ministry of Abundance to start faking records or like setting out five year plans or something. And then, Ashley, you, Grim, you, uh, Alfonso, uh, you do your duty as a mind bobby and just. You actually receive new orders. You're under new administration. Your office is, has now been moved to a certain uh, Jebediah Olaf. You're no longer in service to Cedric or Filer. You, Cedric, are notified of this, of this transition, and you other mind bobbies are uh, assigned to your post. More different mind bobbies, ones who on multiple occasions have come into your house unexpectedly without you giving order or sign and have looked around the place, have scouted the place out. Some, you even noticed some looking at you several times when you're in your booth or when you're walking around towards home. Some of sometimes writing. You, Philip, you notice something quite odd happen. You notice that several other people you we're getting names from start start going away just vanish certain people you know in the league start going away start vanishing as well it's extremely peculiar that this behavior has not happened in the past several years and it's only happening now but by through a mark of faith you are approached actually on, uh, as you're walking through the halls, you are approached by this. Uh, you're not actually approached. There's this gentleman, this tall, lanky gentleman with a suit that is a bit too big for him, a bit sagging on his body, with some very small spectacles walking towards you. And uh, he's carrying like this suitcase under his arm and uh, accidentally... He bumps into you, knocking both of you over. Like he stumbles to his knees, and you like fall on your on your ass. And basically, you're like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" He's not even looking where he's going. And he's like gathering Watch up. Which where you going, you son of a bitch? And he's like gathering up his papers. And he like goes reaches for your shoulder. He's like, "I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry." Don't you, fucking you. touch me. No, no, and he like takes your hand. To like handshake and like I'm so sorry sir I'm so sorry and what feel, did I tell you about touching and he's and you feel as you say that you feel that he passed something to you a note an object a something and he's like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'm, I'm so sorry and like he get the fuck out he, of here I don't he want quickly to see leaves he, he quickly runs off 
and I look around to see if any of my inner party members is to see if they they're approving gays of me handling this you know? And they're like they, they just don't they just don't seem to care that this happens a bit or too often bumping into yeah. other people. Uh, but you don't have the chance to read the note yet. Because I'm pocketing it. There's too many telecasters around. Yeah. You Rick you're actually approached by the same gentleman. Tall, lanky, black suit, sagging, gaunt face, small spectacles, and he's like, You! Up! And he, like, gets you up from his station, and he begins, and he takes out this small notebook. And he's like, I see you have been writing with old post vern vernacular. Would you like to explain yourself? Isn't post vern the new speak yes. we're supposed to be writing in? Yes, you're writing with old words. Well, from like a past edition of it. Ah. I have uh, not received my new edition d dictionary, I'm afraid. Well, that is a shame. You have been using several words that are out of, out of line completely, and you say you've not received your new edition. Oh, oh my god, these logistics, the Ministry of Abundance must be out of racket. And he, like, in front of the telecaster, he begins writing an address. You quite clearly see this, this is him as he's writing an address. And he rips out this, this piece of page from his from his notebook, and he, he tells you, Visit this address, because I do not have the time right now to give you this, this book. I just wanted to tell you that you've been using inappropriate words in your reports. So take this. Yes, command. If I'm not home, then my assistant will give you the book. If I am, I'll give it to you in person. Meet me there, and we will see each other. And he, I'll just take his note and nod. He like walks off, and then finally, uh, it's more dark, and uh, you actually, Grim, you're just sitting at home, just enjoying a nice bowl of soup, and you're like, the cigar smoking is rising up, and like. The house is deadly quiet. The apartment is deadly quiet. And over the telecaster, you hear your name. Alfonso S. And, like, you hear your apartment number and everything. I stand up in that pension. You are to grab your gear and head towards my place of residence. And he, and he like, splurts out his address. You will be my bodyguard. Understood? Yes, sir. Good. I hope to see you there. Then there's a pop. Manfred has arrived. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Come, come up here, Manfred. Come on. Come on. I'm so sorry for being so late. I, it's I, fine. I, it's, it's it's completely fine. No, 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 no. I have a I have excuse. A very good excuse. Hold on. Let, let's hear it. Sleepy. Just be aware that we are currently recording. I have a I have a really good excuse. I I bought a, a comically large Edison light bulb. I'm sorry. We have it's a the size of my head. Do you have a picture of it? I will I can not take a picture of it. I will not believe you until I see a picture of it. I will take a picture of it today. I but don't it's, see it's... how this would keep you from returning. On yeah, time. but either way, well, because I have to buy it from Home Depot. But either way, either way, Manfred. Uh, let me catch you up to speed. You, Simon Black, men, uh, part of the Ministry of Abundance, uh, you know this guy, and basically, uh, today was a more peculiar day. You, you'd received more orders, you'd received more, more instructions, more, 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 more job than usual. And uh, as you were walking towards, you know, towards your office, you just, you just came into work. As you were walking towards your office, uh, there's this just incident right in front of you where just your friend Joseph bumps into this other random inner party member and he's just like ah, I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and you just hear this commotion and just Joseph just looks completely ashamed of himself and he's like oh Simon it's so good to see you and like begins shaking your hand like so good to see you my friend oh, I'm so sorry to ask this of you but would you like to come to my house later tonight there's some important business I wish to discuss. About the party, about it. About everything. Would you happen to be free tonight? 
Well, I, I believe so. I am free. I can help you with whatever you need. Thank you. Do, do, do please come. There, there, there will be roughly around uh, 300 individuals. An outer party member of Bobby and the person you just saw bump into me. I need your support, okay? Okay. And he, like, shakes off your hand, he pats you on the back, and he, like, he leaves. And you notice this on your hand is a splotch of ink. It's like he he unusually pressed his hand strongly against yours, and as you look at your hand, you see a message. And I'm actually going to send it to you in DMs what this message says. You see that basically with printer ink, not printer, just regular ink, just on your, on your, like, palm. You notice it, and, like, you quickly scrub it off. You know what it means. You, you both know what it means and also don't know what it means. You scratch it off. All of you arrive at the house of uh, Joseph Brooks. Uh, all of you walk in, all of you notice each other, and all of you are let inside into his apartment. Uh, this beautiful room, dark, uh, dark uh, reddish wooden floor, uh, decor on the walls with the same wood, a uh, fake fireplace, a telescreen laughing loudly, a barking loudly, pardon, his desk, and there's this little off door off to the side that probably leads into the rest of the house. And you're just standing there, you know, like, please come in, come in, come in. And uh, he, like, gestures towards the table that is uh, round and has about four seats. Uh, he, he gestures just you to take uh, take your seat over there. And he, take a seat, I shall. Yeah, take a seat. And uh, after, like, a minute or two, he gets up from his own desk and, like, begins walking towards you. But he stops... Uh, Roughly about in front of the telescreen, where you know the telescreen can see the entire room at this point. He's like, he's looking at you over the desk, quite uh, expectant, as if he's waiting for you to say something. So you're going to tell us why we are here? No offense intended. No, I already told you why you're here. And as as he says that, uh, the steward walks in and like Joseph is bar like babbling about the book. And like how he noticed several mistakes in all of your guys' behavior. And then the moment the servant just flicks a switch and the tele the tele the telecaster goes off, Joseph's demeanor kind of changes a little bit. He's like Alright. So all of you are here, correct? Sight, I mean Cedric, last time I checked. Cedric, Philip, Alfonso, and Simon, correct? Yes, we are still uh, here. Okay, good. I haven't died yet. And, like, takes a seat. And he begins talking, like, Cedric, if I'm not mistaken, you have uh, had intercourse with more than one woman, correct? Yes. So you have mingled. Philip, I know you are a dissident and how loudly you spoke against the party in that bar. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. You, Alfonso, I know about that certain journal you keep. Am I correct? He simply looks aside and nods. And you, Simon, you don't really like how the party's moving, do you? You want to return to the Capitalistic old days. Yes. I mean... Mm -hmm. So? All three of you are dead men walking, aren't you? Uh, that depends. Bronze looks as, as Philip and he's like, You do know what they'll do to you in the Ministry of Affection, don't you? I've been there already. I'm not stupid. Have you been ro to room one, uh, 1001? Not exactly there, but I've been on the room next to it. You, of course, are still a man breathing and not quite in love with good uncle, are you now? No, not anymore. 
So that means you've not seen the worst of the ministry. Can you, Cedric, tell him what lays for him in front if he does not, you know, hide his way? Well, assuming standard procedure, generally the policy is removal of teeth first, after all, and then tongue, because you can't have someone speaking with dissidents. And then usually it's just kind of up to the creative mind of the torturer. I've been doing this for a long, long time. Now, Mr. Bronze, you see the Telecaster is off. Yes. You know all of our dirty laundry, and considering counting your little butler here, that is the two of you and the four of us. Yes. But I'm here to make so, you an offer, Mr. Philip. Oh, yeah. I'm here to make you an offer. Well, as you may know, all four of you have been followed. I think that is clearly given by your more than obvious dissidents. They know you're here. And if they catch any of you, well, let's just put it lightly that every single one of you will never see the light of day again. And you will be in the place where there is no darkness. So, how about we strike a deal? How about I write all of your records clean? And you do some favors for me. What do you Question, say? what did I do? He like shoots a glance at you. And he's like, you, Simon, you have been under the crosshair of the mind bobbies for quite a while. Ever since, do you have you never questioned your transfer from Chicago all the way to lonely London, in the heart of Britannica? Seriously, Simon? Capitalism? Really? They know what you've done in Chicago. It's amazing. And they put you here so that you'd be closer to the heart of the ministry. So that if you step out of line again, like you did back in Chicago, they wouldn't be running away anymore. No more long nights on the Great Lakes. You understand me now? I suppose. And I'm pretty sure the rest of you already know what I'm referencing when I say that you have quite dirty laundry. So what do you say, gentlemen? Do you agree to this deal of mine? I clean up your past, you do me favors? You know, like, as an outside, uh, does this imply, like, you know, I'm in the company of rebels, people with secret diaries, and filthy capitalists? Does this imply I'm literally only a criminal because I can't keep it in my pants? Yes. That is hilarious. <laughs> the embarrassment. Why does everyone... Imagine happen? my political career! So? It's basically... So what uh, sort of favors yeah. would you need of us? At the moment... At the moment, none come to mind. As of yet, but I will sure to notify you when some do come. So, gentlemen, clean records for some menial labor. He, like, cracks a smile as he says that. I would at least want to know which team are you playing for, then. He kind of shoots a glance at you. He's, he leans in a bit forward and looks at Does you. Does he wink at me with his left eye? Um, he does wink at you. I wink back at him then. Nice. Very well, I shall find this uh, more than agreeable then. What of the rest of you? Uh, and technically, I'm not being... particularly seem to have a choice for many of us, so I accept this deal expeditiously. We all are blackmailed to accept 
whether we want it or not. But others may have reasons to do so more willingly. So, Alphonse simply nods. Well, despite your unsettling demeanor, the offer does seem acceptable. Cool. I, I agree. Good. I, I agree to your terms. Now, since all of you have agreed, may you mind if I run through a few questions? And Not he, like we have much of a choice, let's do we? Let's your little heart out. And he, and he pulls out a little notebook from his, uh, from his breast pocket and he begins asking, Are you willing to kill? Yeah, no problem. Chill. To kill. To kill, yes. Anyone specifically? I, I can. Yeah. Done it before. Alright. Yes! I, if I can do it for a ministry, I can do it for you. Well, it depends on who the target is that one needs to be killed, but... Are you willing to... Most likely, yes. Are you willing to steal? Building! I'm doing that all the time. No problem in that. Okay. No problem. Are you more... I mean, uh... Would... Are you okay with the idea that you may require, you may have to wear a new face and work elsewhere in some other part of Britannica? What do you mean, wear a new face? As in, your former identity will be gone and a new one will be in place. Does that sound good? I mean, so far, this As... seem like everything I already agreed to from accepting dirty work from you. It looks like... and... Sendir's just gonna nod, but he doesn't seem very pleased about that one, you know? He, he Would this be a temporary arrangement or a permanent one? If you ever acquire a new face, I am afraid to tell you that it will be more than permanent. Because if you ever show yours again... Well, let's just say that other things may occur. Didn't you wipe the slate clean? Of course I'm wiping the slate clean. Don't worry about that one. However, the slate might get dirty again if you're not careful. Well, either way. I, I, final question. I have a question. What, what is with the unsettling demeanor with you? <laughs> final question. If one of my favors so demands of, would you be willing to pour, to throw acid upon a child's face? No. Every answer is fine, I need to know. Well, again, it's a bit nuanced, isn't it? For the sake of it, well, maybe. Cedric doesn't change his answer, it's just always no. The other two abstain? Maybe. Alright. Well. Now, a more personalized question for the each of you. And he closes down his notebook and puts it aside. Yo, Cedric. Would you be. Would you be open to the thought of unexplainably going away and never seeing your family ever again, or even worse, having to put them down yourself? Party or whatever, be damned. You go after my kids and I'm going to choke that little stupid fucking eyes out of your skull. I can't do a really good French accent, but just imagine he's just being violently French at the moment. Oh, is your character's French? Oh, you are oh. Irish. Oh, oh wait, yeah. no, you're no, French. No, he's, he's, uh, he's French-Canadian. Oh, you're from Quebec. All right, yeah, yeah. Quebec. Philip. Would you be more than willing to cut out all of your contacts to make sure all of them never see the light of day again? Would you, perhaps, be open to forfeit your own position? 
fall down back the graces of the elements, the mercy of them. Well, you probably know of my previous handiwork, or so to speak, my quote unquote campaign in what I try to do. You understand that uh, continue on that what you say is if I do that, that campaign is basically over. I will have to start again later. I don't know if I have the time to start again later. So I'm going to ask you back. Are you 100% certain that your uh, that your plan is going to work? I am more than certain, Mr. Philip. Then we have a deal. Because I cannot wait for to start again a second time from the ground up to achieve what I plan to. Alfonso! I know what hardships you've been through, and I, my heart is placed firmly with you. However, would you be willing to do it all over again? To, for you to be the one pointing the gun at that certain someone? He simply makes his salute. And you... Not really the talkative type, is he? <laughs> and you, my friend, Simon. I know of you for a long time, but would you be willing to repeat the deeds you've done in Chicago all over again? Most likely not. Alright then. We have it settled. You, Cedric, will leave now. You, Philip, will leave 30 minutes from now. You, Alfonso, will accompany uh, Cedric. And you, Simon, you will leave at day's break. And he, like, hand, uh, he pulls out a dictionary, uh, the 11th edition of Post Vern, and hands it over to Cedric. I'll take it. And uh, he, thank you. he writes up a little warning, gives it, uh, writes up two warnings, gives it to Philip and to... Uh, and to Alfonso. And he also says, from now on, you may see the random old man come up to you, pat you, and then leave off. And then you will never see them again. My favor will come in the form of one of these men. They may be different for each of you, but know that you will be seeing each other. Whenever that favor comes around, we have a deal. But we already had a deal. You know, just making sure that all of you know the terms of what you're getting yourselves into. Yes, we're on the same page. Good. And if anyone asks, I'm just going to tell that I'm collecting protection money. Like this in the inner party. You, Philip, have a very wrong wrong thought of what the true inner party is like. But either way, I digress. You, Cedric, you should be leaving now, same as you, Alfonso. You, Cedric, will be taking a regular path to your home. You will be stopping by a local grocery store and buying yourself a carton of milk. You, Alfonso, will directly rock it back to your house and seem exhausted in front of the teles telecaster and then fall straight to bed. You, Philip, you will be walking home on your regular path through alleyways as you do shadily, but you will make sure to trip upon in front of a certain fish shop that is long closed, and then you will continue walking. Fish shop, all right. And you, my friend Simon, you will be leaving at day's break. Five in the morning, you will be heading off to your home. If anyone stops to ask, <coughs> you spent you spent your time with your friend, with your good friend, Joseph Bronze. Now, Mr. Bronze, okay. I hate to intrude upon you, but upon signing a deal, there are some customs. And besides, I'm 40, sure. But I'm in relatively good physique, so 
Just tripping up is not really convincing, so... Perhaps a little liquid encouragement... To make it more believable that I would be tripping. He hands you a, a small bottle of scotch from a nearby drawer. This should suffice. Well, cheers. Anyway! It's up top! And like, uh, Cedric and Alfonso are ushered out of the house by the servant. And you do as he instructs. And nothing is out of the ordinary. And you do as well, Philip, 30 minutes later. Get out of the house, a bit drunk. And you, Simon, you leave at day's break, go into your house. Somebody does stop and ask you a patrol, and you just tell them you are bronzes. And then like that, a week passes, maybe a month. But, uh... You don't hear back from what the... happens what happens with the tripping like oh you ju that was just as a precaution to make sure uh, you know uh you're being like uh, followed by this uh, patrol like. oh okay 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 I thought I was you know find something on the pavement or anything you know. no you're, you're being followed by this uh, patrol thinking you're fake dr <laughs> fake drunk but the trip actually uh, made okay. it seem realistic and they stopped following you um but yeah, like, weeks, days pass, and you've not been tagged, or, like, you've heard from this courier of his. Uh, but one random day, just any old regular day, you're just... Or you happen to be walking home, or you happen to be at the store buying some razors. And you, Cedric, you're patted on your, on your back, and something slid into your rear pocket. As the man, uh, cheerfully... Looks at you, excuses himself, and walks away. You, Philip, um, are walking down an alleyway trying to corner one of your regular contacts, get some more names for Rick, for Cedric. Um, when a random homeless man begs you for some money, uh, and as you as you bend over to yell at him, he grabs you by the hand, pulls you in, and slips something in your coat, and then like exchanges like a punch with you and he runs away you mm. you Alfonso on our regular raid one of the men bloodied and like beaten up he, he goes to punch you and you like engage in this brawl with him and then he like pulls you in pulls you by the neck and he's like he slips something under your gas masks like a little piece of paper and then throws you off and he's just as quickly just killed by your mind bobby friends and you simon you're at your desk enjoying some little paperwork just filing some stuff for the ministry of abundance uh when among the papers you notice uh hurriedly scribbled on one of the reports the address for a certain apartment in glasgow and I'm sorry to say, but that's where we're going to be leaving off tonight. Damn. Um, that's it for today's session. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, if you have suggestions, opinions, or yeah. thoughts, I would uh, be more than happy to hear them right now. And for the people at home to hear them, to see if I'm a good or bad GM. Uh, I, think, uh, yes. I mean, first I session is always going to be a little bit wonky, since you're kind of finding the footing, but overall, mm -hmm. it was pretty good. Um... Uh, but either way, that's it for today's episode. I hope you, I hope you, the and today viewer, we've learned Cedric will actually kill for his kids. Oh my God, he has like a little bit of morality. But anyway, for and you, the viewer, and, uh, that is the end of this corner. episode. Hopefully, you've enjoyed. You enjoyed watching, and if you made it this far, congratulations. Um, that link stand. Like and subscribe. I, I don't like begging, but yeah, sure, do that. Like and subscribe. Okay, yeah, Give no, me you need money. to beg at the end of every episode. We want money and we want views. <laughs> That's all you are to watch us. Watch 1900's no, Bicycle Crash. <laughs> you must watch it. It's like a slow motion. It's like a, This Stated. campaign's going to be like a slow motion crash, you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> links are going to be in the description to, uh, I believe, my socials or whatever I'm going to put down there. Uh, you're also going to find links to these lovely gentlemen if they have anything, if they want to share with anything. Uh, if they don't, then they don't, no. then I put nothing there, and then you're going to be sad. 
No, you'll never find any. favorite class from the 1984 book? Funny that, that this is the book that was in Heroes of New Prussia. <laughs> uh, yeah, a bit of trivia. Um, in Heroes of New Prussia 2, Manfred gave me the idea, oh, there should be a book named 1884 in this universe. And I was like, yeah, there should be. Wait, okay, hold on. So does this mean canonically we're all just characters in a book in... Yes, this is how it links the the, the Prussia cinematic universe together. Yes, you could, it's all, yes. all of you canonically are the main uh, heroes of the book. One of the main character groups. The the other main, you know, you know, there's like this um this interesting dynamic between like books and like I don't know if you guys. I, I, this is a series and gets over it. Pardon? It's just a book series instead of one book now. I guess. Anyway, uh, enough babbling by me. Video over. Roll out, Rob.